Hello, today let's have a look at my Ripsalis garden. There will be a few of my Lepismiums as well. Most of my Ripsalis are kept outside in the garden under the tree or on the fence in spring and summer. Some of them are still kept indoors. With regards to Epiphilium, I'm going to do a separate video about them. So, the first Ripsalis that I'm going to show you doesn't have a positive ID. So, if you recognize what it is, just let me know in the comments, please. I think that it might be Ripsalis burcelli because of its a bit chubby stems and some of them, they are reddish in color. Unfortunately, it hasn't flowered yet, so I can't be 100% sure what it is for sure it looks so funny all forking out in different directions uh, those uh, those branches for forking out it's quite a big specimen as well okay now let's move on to three ripsalis micranta that i've got the first one is ripsalis micranta micranta i believe and this one flowered for the first time for me this um, yeah and as you can see the flowers are quite small <laughs> to be honest as all ripsalis flowers are usually small and this one is white there were only a few of them but i'm still pleased that it flowered it put out uh, quite a lot of growth you can see that it's a bit different color to the old branches and those green berries there they are seed pods of fruit i'm not going to sow seeds because i'm although they germinate usually for me but later on once they are taken out of the bag uh, they don't really long last for me so i'm not the best person to do it and this one is another form you could see the name there uh, which I believe it is and it's got more serrated branches I think it hasn't flowered yet so again I can't be 100% certain that it is what I think it might be and finally the first the third form of Ripsalis micranta is Gilbert Jerry now I got this one uh, last winter I think and this is what it looked like with healthy stems so I brought it home then I noticed that uh, quite a lot of segments started to drop off and it developed some unsightly black spots that I'm going to show you in a moment so I changed the soil I put it in a, a bit brighter location and it got better so I don't know whether it was uh, cold stressed or stressed with the change of location but as you can see here it still st some stems obviously are like that but it put out lots of new growth this spring and summer and here we've got Ripsalis baxifera shaferi it's a funky looking epiphytic cactus with long stems and it flowered for me as well and it's a new addition so i'm really pleased that it bloomed only a few of flowers but i'm still pleased and they are typical of baxifera flowers small i also made a short one of short video about uh, my basic ripsalis potting mix so i will link up above and here is one of the biggest ripsalis in my collection and i bought it under the name of ripsalis pulchra which usually has got like pinkish flowers and this is how it flowered lots of buds lots of flowers fortunately they didn't open at the same time which would be a spectacular but i'm still happy that it flowered but as you can see it's 
Ripsalis baxifera, it's not palcra, so I'm still searching for a proper Ripsalis <laughs> palcra. But it's so hard because there's so many mislabeled Ripsalis, so I may end up with a few more Ripsalis baxifera before I manage to find my desired one. If you want to know more about how I care about my Ripsalis and other PPT cacti, check out my video about everything about my Ripsalis. So this was part one, which I made last year. So I will link up above. There's also a part two about Epithelium, but I will mention that when I'll be talking about my Epithelium from this year. Now, moving on to the next plant. So, again, I don't have a positive ID. It might be Ripsalis baxifera, or it might be also Ripsalis teris, teris. I don't know which form. So, I'm not sure. It hasn't flowered, but it looks so cool with those long, slender branches all forking out <laughs> in all sorts of directions and it's one of uh, growing fast plants it's so cool <laughs> and again if you know what it is let me know in the comments give me a thumb up if you like those uh, ripsalis or lepismium that i will show you a bit later and uh, maybe which plants you would like to add to your collection and here we've got another one and this is Ripsalis baxifera horida so it looks totally different to other ones it is covered with those uh, tiny hair which may suggest that it can take more sunlight than the other ones it put out lots of new growth and also it flowered. It flowered last year and the same this year. Only just a couple of uh, flowers. But they were so tiny that you can easily miss them. So they are like kind of green whitish, <laughs> really small. And now the here you will see the berries or fruit. Now here is Campus Portuana. I'm not going to dwell on this one because I've already made a separate video which I will put the link either above or in the description box so check it out. But it bloomed gorgeously and here we've got a bit different Ripsalis. As you can see the flowers are orange and a bit bigger than of those of Ripsalis baxifera. So in winter last year, it was in the room unheated on the northwest side of the house. And it was packed this spring with bats. It's such a gorgeous color. You can also see there some pinkish berries. And this plant is a magnet for mealybugs. As soon as there are flowers, as soon as there are buds, you can spot mealybugs. <laughs> so it's a constant battle there. I've already made a video about this plant and any other PVD cacti in my collection. So I think I will put the whole playlist at the end of this video as well, so you can choose what you'd like to watch, if anything. Now, I've got two Lepismium cruciforums in my collection. So this is the first one, green one, which is not sun stressed. And it's the second one that I bought. So, uh, the first one was just um, a couple of unrooted cuttings, which I rooted. So I will show you both flowers of both of those different uh, plants because the flowers are a bit different in the color. It's a fast growing epiphytic cactus. 
and now I'm going to show you the other one which is sun stressed funny enough it was kept uh, most of the time indoors and it got sun stress and this one was kept all summer outdoors and didn't uh, get this red color and I already also made a video about Lepis Mioflorebundum, which is a related plant to this one. So I will just put the link so you can see it. And that it's got a bit bigger flowers to those ones, but still gorgeous. So as you can see, this one has got like white with uh, pink stripes, flowers. And the one which was sun stress, it's just more pinkish. And it flowers in abundance. Okay, time to move the to the next one. And here we've got uh, Kimnakia, I think this is how you pronounce, Romulosa red coral. Or you may know it under old name as Ripsalis remulosa. Red Cora because when it's sun stress, it takes on this beautiful color and it flowers every year for me. And here you can see it was packed with berries again. So the next one is Ripsalis Crispata, again one of the biggest specimen in my collection and for the first time ever it bloomed only a few of flowers but at least I could see it not just in the photos on the internet but in, with my own eyes they were relatively big I would say all white it's a lovely plant with lovely flowers so I, on purpose, you can I put the close-ups of flowers and of the stems. So if you've got an epiphytic cacti in, in your collection that you're not sure of the names, so maybe I will help you to identify them by this video. Although bear in mind, sometimes they might be mislabeled. Like we had an example with Ripsalis pulchra. Now this Ripsalis occidentalis may resemble to you or look like a bit like Ripsalis crispata because it's a related species uh, but a bit more elongated branches I would say. It hasn't flowered yet for me, just uh, ha has quite a lot of new growth. Nicely looking plant. And another one, which was sun stressed, and this is Ripsalis epileptica. And again, I made a video when it flowered, I think it was in winter. So you can check it out either in the description below, or it might be linked above, because there's just a limited number of links that I can put out. So here, this is how it's sun stressed. And at the back where the light does, as much light doesn't hit the branch, you can see it's more green. Here we go. It's again, this plant grows quite fast for me. Gorgeous. And now let's have a look at Ripsalis terrace form Heteroclada. No flowers yet for me, maybe next year, fingers crossed. It looks so funky again, with lots of new growth and some branches you can see are covered with those uh, tiny hairs. <laughs> it looks so funny. Beautiful plant. I just love Ripsalis. I just wish I had more space in the house to keep even more. And this one is a bit more unique looking, Ripsalis, comparing to the others that you can see. You've, you've seen the it's Ripsalis again then this. And it's got like two different stems. One was more triangular and some of them are 
more flat. Again, no flowers yet for me. Now, this is Gypsy's Clavata. It's my second attempt now with cultivating this plant. As you can see here, it's all fluffy, quite big. I think it prefers more humidity than some other Ripsalis. So in winter, it's in my kitchen above the sink. So in theory, there's quite a lot of humidity, but I can see already it doesn't look, doesn't look as nice as it looked in summer. So in summer, I'll be put, hopefully it will survive till next summer. So we'll put out again for a circulation outside. Now this one you may know uh, as Ripsalis paradoxa minor, but there's nothing like that in botanical terms. So I think this one's Pachilionis, but again, I'm not sure about which form because it hasn't flowered yet. But since I put it for the first time this season outside, it has grown so much with so many new stems. And now I've got two Ripsalis Iverdiana. The first one is dark green, again no flowers, but lots of new growth. And another one, which I prefer a bit more to this one, is light green Ripsalis Iverdiana. When I got it, it was uh, a small plant and over two or three years it's grown massively i would i would say and I, it flowered for me once if i found the video or the photo i will put out in a community page here on youtube and here we've got ripsalis punisidius funny looking plant i love this i love this one it's so smooth to touch and it grows in every direction <laughs> and it, it turns a bit uh, reddish as you can see here and again some stems are covered with those uh, fine uh, hairs so i've got two as it turns out both of them were sold as ripsalis flocosa and this one hasn't flowered yet but this one has and again looks when it flowered, then I was able to positively identify it as not Flocosa, but Punisicidaceus. It's <laughs> gorgeous flowers, quite big, I would say. And this plant, again, for the first time ever, was put outside this summer. And oh boy, it liked really, really much. <laughs> so again, next year it will be out in spring and summer. And I'm pleased to say that obviously now it's indoors over winter, but there are five, I think, new buds. So it seems it will be flowering for the second time this year. Now, here we've got Ripsalis Nives Armandi. And look how funny those new groves appear from the epidermis it's not as dramatic as the next plant that i'm going to show you in a moment no flowers always it's next year <laughs> but again lots of new stems if you check out the website ypsalis.com the descriptions of different species of Ypsalis, some of them have got photos as well of plants themselves and uh, flowers. I will put that in the description of this video, the link to this website. So let's move on to Ripsalis, which was sold as Ripsalis pulvinigurum or something like that. And after watching Epiphytic Tacta here on YouTube, I think this is in fact Ripsalis Nives Amundi for Megalantha. It hasn't flowered yet, 
but when I bought it, it must have flowered because there are craters left by previous blooms. It looks, and I already made a video, <laughs> which I will put again in the description box or above, about how alien it looks when the new growth comes out. It's just out of this world. As you can see, some stems are bare and some stems are covered in hair. And finally, we've got Lepismium bolivianum. This year it didn't flower, but it did last year. So again, check out uh, the video if you want to see it. It's flowers. What new growths appeared this year? So, thank you for watching. I welcome your comments and likes. And... Uh, Stay tuned for second part about my epitheliums. Bye.